In this video, we'll be looking at puberty, specifically the changes that occur in males and females, in males under the influence of the hormone testosterone, and then in females under the influence of the hormone estrogen. So puberty in boys, this starts around the age of 12, and this is when the sex organs develop and then gametes are produced. There's a spelling error there. The pituitary gland, so this sits in the brain, secretes a hormone called LH, the luteinizing hormone. And this will then stimulate the cells of Leydig to produce testosterone. So the cells of Leydig, if we look at this diagram here, cells of Leydig sit in between the seminiferous tubules and they are actually the ones that secrete testosterone. Then the pituitary gland also releases a hormone called FSH, the follicle stimulating hormone. And both of these hormones also function in the female reproductive system. And we'll look at that when we look at the menstrual cycle. And also we'll look at them when we get to the endocrine system. You will look at these in more detail. But in any case, the pituitary gland also releases FSH and this stimulates the process of spermatogenesis with testosterone that has been released by the cells of Leydig. So what happens or what are the changes that occur in a boy? The secondary sexual characteristics as they are known, they will develop a deeper voice, um, muscle mass will increase, enlargement of the penis and the testes, sexual drive will increase, production of sperm, increased sweat production, facial and body hair will develop, and then in certain cases, they'll also experience mood swings and emotional outbreaks. But these are not strange because you most likely have already done them in life orientation as well. Puberty in girls starts a little earlier and it starts around from the ages 10 to 12 years. And this starts when the ovaries start secreting the hormones estrogen and progesterone. Now, in South Africa, we use the British way of spelling, so that is why there's an O uh, in front of the E of estrogen. The main changes that occur in girls, the secondary sexual characteristics, there will be increased fatty deposits, uh, widening of hips, breast enlargement, increase in height, development of eggs, start of menstruation, pubic and armpit hair will develop, and then they can also experience mood swings and emotional outbreaks. Then we move on to gametogenesis, which is the formation of gametes. So if we break this word up, gameto means gametes and genesis creation. Now, gametogenesis has its own names in both males and females. So in males, it is known as spermatogenesis, sperm, sperm and then genesis creation of sperm. In females, it is known as oogenesis, so the oo for ovum or oocytes, and genesis creation. Now, the exam guidelines do give you a brief outline of both of these processes. I will just explain them in a bit more detail in this video, so it's just a little clearer. But looking at the exam guidelines, spermatogenesis occurs under the influence of testosterone, and this is when diploid cells of the seminiferous tubules of the testes undergo meiosis and they then form haploid sperm cells. You also need to be able to draw and label a diagram of a sperm cell, specifically the acrosome, the head with the nucleus, the midsection with mitochondria, and then the tail. In oogenesis, this happens under the influence of FSH, the follicle stimulating hormone, and this is when the diploid cells in the ovary undergo mitosis, not meiosis, mitosis first. And then this forms many follicles. So one cell inside a follicle will enlarge and it will undergo meiosis. And of the four cells that are produced, only one survives to form a mature haploid ovum. You also need to be able to draw and label an ovum, specifically the jelly layer, the nucleus, and then the cytoplasm. So I've got this little diagram on the right hand side just to help us see everything a little more visually. So starting out with spermatogenesis, so the production of sperm, 
So what happens here is that the germinal epithelial cells uh, that line the seminiferous tubules of the testis produce or they divide first through mitosis and they produce diploid spermatogonia. Now these spermatogonia grow and they produce uh, primary spermatocytes. They are still diploid. Then they will undergo a first meiotic division. Remember meiosis happens um, in meiosis 1 and then meiosis 2. So under the first meiotic division we go from diploid to haploid and secondary spermatocytes are produced. Now just take note everything that I'm talking about here occurs in this diagram on the left where we have the cross-section of the seminiferous tubules. So we've got the spermatogonium, the primary spermatocytes, and then we are now at the secondary spermatocytes, and they will then undergo a further division um, during meiosis II, and this will then produce haploid spermatids. Now these spermatids will then grow and develop, and they will then finally become um, the sperm cells that will be released. Looking at oogenesis, so oogenesis is a bit different because um, it happens in different stages of a female's development. So the first stages of development actually occur before birth while the female uh, fetus is still in the uterus. And the number of ova is actually predetermined before birth. And then they will remain dormant until puberty. So before birth, the germinal epithelial cells will divide through mitosis and they will produce diploid oogonia. Then these oogonia grow and they develop and they form primary oocytes, which are also di diploid then they will remain dormant until puberty. So this happened before birth and then until uh, up until the ages of 10 to 12 years of age, then only will the first uh, meiotic division occur. And we will then have a secondary um, oocyte that is formed with a polar body. So these polar bodies, you don't really need to know about them but basically they just help conserve the cytoplasm that will be used later for the ovum. So now we have gone from diploid to haploid and we have these secondary oocytes that have been re, uh, produced and this secondary oocyte is actually the um, part that will be released during ovulation from the ovary. Now the second meiotic division only occurs after fertilization has occurred, so after the sperm cell has penetrated the egg cell, then only will the second meiotic uh, division occur. And basically during this time, the uh, secondary oocyte will divide and form two daughter cells and then a large, so the large ovum will then be formed with uh, three polar bodies. And this ovum is then the one that will um, be combined with the sperm cell to form a diploid zygote. So looking at the structure of a sperm cell, so you need to be able to draw this. Um, basically, you need to be able to draw the acrosome, the nucleus, then uh, the neck region, is basically uh, you don't have to worry too much about it but definitely the midpiece with the mitochondria and then the tail so you need to know the functions of each of these parts so the acrosome which sits here at the top contains enzymes that digest the wall of the egg cell for fertilization so it helps the sperm cell get into the egg cell then the nucleus contains the genetic material, specifically 23 chromosomes. And then the midpiece, this section here, that has the mitochondria that provides energy for the movement of the sperms. And then you've got the tail, which is this region over here. And then the tail is used for motility, for movement. That's how they get around. Looking at the egg cell, so the egg cell is a very basic structure. 
um, it's got a layer of jelly and this layer of jelly just basically protects the egg then you've got the cytoplasm that uh, reserves a source or it's a source of nutrients a reserve source of nutrients uh, and then also the nucleus that contains the genetic material specifically the 23 chromosomes now if you want to draw this even uh, in a more simplified way you can basically just do this and then make sure you add the cytoplasm and then the nucleus so then just remember to to label this so you can say this is the layer of jelly and then next is the cytoplasm then you have the nucleus and those are the three regions that you need to know of and then remember to always have a caption with your drawing so this would be an egg cell you can say an a human egg cell for example just so you have a caption because you do get marks for that and that is the end of this video